Welcome. In this video, I would like to show you a trick for the use of Zotero to share bibliographic information with a colleague who also uses Zotero. Now, a week ago, one of my colleagues in Germany asked me for assistance in locating a few um, bibliographic sources for a paper that she's writing. And she had access through her university in Trier to download the files, but she wanted my recommendations for locating appropriate research that answered her particular research questions. So, I logged into my university library, went into the same database that she had been using, and searched for the information, and then found a few articles that I thought might be useful. But in order to share the bibliographic data with her, I created a group in Zotero that allowed me to share a narrow, well-focused library of items with her while we had, while we maintained a Zoom conversation I was modifying data in the Zotero group library, and she could see the changes immediately appear in her version of Zotero installed on her computer half a world away. Let me show you how we did it. Here, I'm sharing um, the screen from the research library at my university. And my colleague's area of interest was in the effect of stress, or I should better say the effect of Parkinson's disease on stress levels within study participants. And this is not my area of expertise, but I was able to at least look at some of the data and offer a, a few comments from my own research experience. So, I logged into my university library, looked at the list of available databases that um, are available to faculty and students, went to the letter P, and then found the Psych Info database. Now, uh, what my colleague was interested in was the effect of Parkinson's disease and stress, or the relationship between the two. So, I searched for Parkinson with an asterisk. That way, it would search for Parkinson, Parkinson's, plural, Parkinson's, singular possessive, and the word stress. I found uh, initially just under 2,300 hits. Now, that's too much information to handle in a short research uh, session, particularly when it's held across two continents and uh, is being uh, mediated through a Zoom connection. So, I limited it to peer-reviewed articles. That narrowed it down to about 1,900 hits. I then selected a date range of from January the 1st, 2017, up through the end of next year. Because sometimes articles are published, um, especially now, during close to the end of a calendar year, but they're given a publication date of the following year. And when I... Uh, executed that limitation, I'm down to 538 hits. Still a fairly large number, but at least we're working in the right direction. So, what I did was I selected these first 20 items because I found a limitation with Zotero. If I tried to select more than 20 at a time, I was getting error messages in adding those to my Zotero database. So, I select 20, I clicked the button 
uh, for Save to Zotero that's here in my web browser. It then identified the 20 articles and I clicked OK. Now, I'm not going to click OK now because it actually takes a, a moment or two for this, for the downloads to execute. So I'll show you the result here in my Zotero database. So I went through and I found a few articles. These are the results of my first couple of searches. And uh, they're here in my Zotero library. I do have access to the PDFs if I'd like to read more details while talking about the articles with my colleague. And to make sure my colleague is able to see the same Zotero database that I'm looking at, I went into my Zotero account through Zotero.org and I created a group that allowed me to then create a library within the group. And I'll show you how I did that. So here on the Zotero website, this is Zotero.org, I clicked, I first logged in, and then I click groups, and you can see that I created a group just using the names of the two of us, Elka and Dave. And then I sent Elka an invitation to join this group, and I can do that right here by managing members. It only took her a moment. She got the email message. She clicked the link. She now has access to see any data that I put into the Elka and Dave library. I'll go back to Zotero, and you can see that I have, in addition to my own library, which I've collapsed just to save screen real estate, I have a group library named Elka and Dave. And these are the entries from the library search that are stored in this group library. And Elka is able to see this exact same library on her computer, even though she's working in Germany. So, I think that this ability to create group libraries and share it with one other or multiple other researchers can be really helpful to both professional researchers, faculty members, but also to students, especially those who are working on team projects. I encourage you to explore the options that are available to you in Zotero. And don't think of Zotero as simply a tool to manage your own research material, but a tool in which you can collect research data, bibliographic data, PDF files, Microsoft Word documents, and share all of that data with other researchers, be they learning team members or other professional researchers. Until we meet again in a future video, I wish you the absolute best in all of your academic activities and particularly in your use of Zotero when you must collaborate with a colleague. Bye for now.